Okay, we're there. We are at the Pluto return for the U.S. chart. This is where it's going to get interesting. Maybe a little scary at the same time, but we'll find out. Okay, we are doing the numerology and astrology for 2-20-2022. Notice all those twos, and in two more days, there's going to be 2 2 2 2 0 2 2 Whew. Okay, so now reminding everybody that the two is the number of negative mind or critical mind. And so with all those twos, there's going to be a lot of criticism, obviously, from certain things related to the Olympics, obviously, from the Russia-Ukraine story. God knows what else is going to crop up on this particular day, but there's going to be a lot of debate and a lot of criticism. So while there's a lot of people out there that are talking about how amazing that's going to be and that this is very auspicious, I'm like, well, it's auspicious in sort of an intense way. Um, it's going to be analytically, it's going to be looked at and analyzed for generations to come as we move forward. And it is challenging our intellect, it's challenging our morals and values, it's making us look objectively at the duality and the unfairness and the imbalances that are in the world, especially related to how we treat athletes and children and other people and countries and, and all this. So it's going to be a debate pretty intensely. So, but let's start at the obvious beginning. If you add two, two, zero, two, zero, two, two together, you're going to get the number 10 or the number one. You've heard me say that before. So it's sort of like, you know, we can look at both sides, which is what we're going to do at this particular point. It looks at the importance of this day with the U.S. chart starting its Pluto return also. Hmm. Isn't that so fascinating how that works? Yeah, I always love it when the astrology is doing one thing, the numerology is doing the same thing. And then the external world is clearly reflecting that back to us. We are clearly at the point of new beginning, the number one. Change comes because change always comes. And we have to learn to adapt to a world that is becoming more and more unfamiliar. Nature has been destabilized and now what used to be predictable is no longer something that we can safely anticipate. The number 10 calls us to power and asks us to find the radiance inside that will become our guiding light. That light within is the source of all life and it knows better what we need and what we are going to want for our future than we do. I keep coming back to those places of being kind and as loving as one is able to as this future unfolds. Protecting ourselves while helpful will not always keep us from our own karmic lessons, but we can support those in need by opening up our heart and being generous when called to act. There is great power in knowing when to act and then actively responding. The astrology today. Today was the day that created democracy of the United States of America in 1776. It was a day that Ben Franklin, an avid astrologer, by the way, picked for many reasons that particular day and has clearly stood that astrological day has clearly stood the test of time for the last 248 years. Now, that was on July 4th, which was in this time of cancer, but we're talking about Pluto return and Pluto has it comes around. So Pluto is coming around to the 27 degrees and that's what we're talking about. But on February 18th, you know, which was just a few days ago, uh, there was a current transiting Neptune in the U.S. chart that also came full circle to 22 degrees of Pisces and that is in opposition to the U.S. birth chart at 22 degrees of Virgo and that started us off on this new journey and this particular thing only happens once every 165 years. So while there's all this focus on Pluto, we sometimes forget the powerful impact that Neptune is playing in this unraveling. Neptune rules the foreboding currents that show us divine revelation. It is known historically as a planet designed to point to catastrophes and natural disasters. I expect the next two years for floods, weather phenomena, tsunamis, volcanoes, hurricanes, to shift our perspective and launch us into ways to adjust to a world showing us how dysfunctional and lazy we have become. 
Neptune's last moment in Pisces at this degree was the time the Civil War happened in America. Notice the conflicts happening in America right now. It also catapulted us into a strong spiritualist movement and the expansion of transcendental philosophy. Not necessarily a bad thing. I expect to see much more abundance, uh, more, much more acceptance into the intuitive realms and paranormal sciences going forward. We clearly are accepting that we are not the only beings in this universe. Finally, Pluto continues this shift today and while we are in a prophetic Pisces sun with the igniting power of Pluto, know that transformation is bound to occur. Pluto comes to 27 degrees for the first time since July 4th, 1776, and already we see a world, the world powers grappling with forces that are on the verge of erupting into war. Pluto and Capricorn intends to force us to dig deep into those things thought long buried and done. The global issues are often not addressed, and those things lead to war. Russia is starving and going bankrupt. The majority of their money comes from oil, and that system is collapsing as we speak. Ukraine has better growing seasons, more food, minerals, and uranium, and a port on the Black Sea, all things that would give Russia an advantage that they desperately need and want. The Middle East is also in a crisis over the collapse of oil, and while certain countries have been actively shifted into solar energy as quickly as they can, the truth is that with oil and gas prices so low, the Middle East is also suffering. There is instability in North Korea, and still, while that seems to be quiet, know that the power behind that silence is not us, but China. While this Pluto transit is going to reveal many secrets, I think of the many hidden things that will arise from certain presidents of recent past, it is also going to disrupt and shake loose those things that are outdated and in the way of progress. I believe we are manifestors in the physical realm and we are in a growth phase of huge proportions going forward. Technology is going to change us forever. It already has. Look at how many can work from home now and how that has become the norm. I believe that we will see debt forgiveness for students in higher education. They will have to do this because people are so entrapped by the COVID restrictions that school is more difficult than ever. And without education, this country is going to no longer become a leader in anything. The moon finishes up in the peacemaking sign of Libra, but know that it is going to shift into the aggressive sign of Scorpio tomorrow. While many are still trying to negotiate with Russia, it will prove futile. The moon will square to Venus and Mars, and that indicates that conflicts are on the verge of exploding. Personal space seems to be a necessity, but there is so much upset in the external world that those interconnections with others are just going to fall by the wayside. Know that there is a side of all of this that we cannot see, nor are we prepared for. My quote for today, there is great power in knowing when to act and then actively responding. And my blog for today, <laughs> okay. Um, anybody who's noticing the date on this is noticing that I'm doing this um, on the 18th, which is after the watching the fiasco unfold with ice skating. And I could not help but remember the many manipulations that teachers and coaches unloaded on me in my dance career. I watched the red-haired Russian skater in Meltdown, and I heard some of what she was saying to the coaches. As a dancer in Berlin, one could not help but understand bits of various languages because they were we were a melting pot of dancers from various countries. It was amazing to listen in the studio to German, English, Russian, Spanish, and the various ways that English was spoken because of having Australians, New Zealanders, South Africans, British, and Americans. While I cannot say I have fluency in most of them, I understand quite a bit. And the Russian, Alexandra, was furious that they had been put in this position and that here she had won a silver medal in the Olympics and everything felt horrible and somehow it was not good enough for the coaches. And so she did not want to go to the medal ceremony. She was insistent. She said it over and over again that she was not going. Nor do I blame her. Now, of course, she did end up going because you had to. But 
Also at the same time, while the gold medalist, Anna, who should have been celebrating, was left alone, waiting on the drama to subside, feeling not like a winner. And she was a huge winner who had kept her cool head in the middle of the greatest controversy ever created in the Olympics. She should be commended for her bravery and skill. All this focus was on the star Russian skater, Camilla, and these other two skaters under enormous pressure had won gold and silver. This should have been the triumph of their lives, but it was overshadowed by the meltdown and pressure put on Camilla. And Camilla should have never been put in that position in the first place. What a gorgeous skater who now is forever damaged by the terrible choices of those that should have protected her. I know the coaches are at fault, and I know that when performers look good, it makes the coaches look good. And I know that those coaches have their positions because of their ability to kowtow to their government. I recognized in my 20s that I was used by teachers for their performances and the money that is generated by a successful show. How often was I given very strong antibiotics for pneumonia in order to keep me performing? The answer is three times. I got pneumonia three times over one winter in Berlin and the ballet mistress who had a sister who was a doctor without looking at me, this doctor ordered the strongest broad spectrum antibiotic to keep me able to perform. She didn't know what I had, so she just gave me this huge broad spectrum antibiotic. I did not know how strong it was, nor that it was the strongest antibiotic at that particular time. I did not know that one cannot take this drug for months. I thought this ballet mistress was trying to help me, but she was trying to save a series of performances with Makaraba, who was coming to guest, and they had three dancers get injured at that time, and those dancers were out. So they desperately needed me in that moment to kind of do everything. And I wanted to please them. Uh, I wanted to be the good dancer and do what I was told. The end result was I almost died. I had a total immune system collapse and I was hospitalized. I don't remember three weeks of my life. When I came back to the studio and I saw myself in a mirror, I looked like a starved wraith. I was down to 110 pounds and I am five foot 10 inches tall and I did not recognize in myself, myself in the mirror. As a reference point, I am currently 165 pounds. Okay, so no one apologized to me. No one cared how I was. No one came to visit me when I was sick. And, what, and that was when I realized that most of us are expendable. There will always be more young, eager dancers or skaters willing to bend over backwards for little money to be on that stage and to feel the rush of a performance and an audience. I can see that this moment is a moment of extreme global awakening for all of us to care more for our children and their well-being than to capitalize on their youth, light, and talent. I wish for all of us to change how we treat the youth of tomorrow because very soon they will be the adults caring for us. Thanks everyone.